Hello again and welcome back to our course on Excel 2019 Advanced. In this section we're going to start to look at tables and if you've not come across tables in Excel before you might be a little mystified as to why we have tables at all in Excel as Excel data by nature is in tabular form. But the advantage we have when we work with tables is that we identify a range of cells on a worksheet as a table and that gives us additional features and functionality. The additional features include the ability to be able to style a table using standard styles or indeed modifying them to a style you need and then amongst the additional functionality you get are the ability to filter on columns to very easily be able to change the number of rows and columns and do things like auto totaling of columns. Now in this first section I'm going to show you how to create tables from existing ranges on worksheets and also introduce you to some of the features and functionality. Now if all you want to do is create a table, if you click on the insert tab and table, this brings up a little create table dialog and by default when you have no selection when you do this, a table will be created in the single cell A1, which isn't really going to be a lot of use to us. So let's select a range on the worksheet. So I'm going to select A1 to H17. I'm going to select my table has headers and click OK. And now I have a table created. Each of the columns has a header, so you can see there column 1, column 2, column 3, etc. And I can start to put data into my table. But on this occasion, I'm not going to create an empty table like this. I'm going to take some existing data and show you how to change that into a table with very little effort at all. So I'm going to close this workbook without saving it. And instead, we're going to take a look at the invoice we started working on earlier in the course. Now, one part of this invoice is suitable to become a table, and that's the order details section. And if I did what I did just now and inserted a table by selecting the rows that make up the line numbers, I could create a table on that basis. But actually, Excel is a bit cleverer than that, and all I really need to do is click somewhere within the range that I want to make into a table. And now if I click on Insert and Table, Excel has tried to work out what I want to make into a table. Now if you look at the marching ants there, you can see it's got B6 to H11, which is a pretty good try at that table. Notice that it hasn't included the totals row. And in fact, I could include that if I wanted to, but I'm going to cover that in just a moment. So I'm going to stick with what Excel has worked out for me. And now I have my table. And notice that while you see it's kind of greyed out there, and note also the row numbers on the left, which are highlighted 6 to 11, whilst the table is selected, you'll see the Table Tools Design tab up there on the ribbon. And I'm going to look at some of the functions on the Design tab a little bit later on in this section. But for the moment, let's just look at the table itself. Now let's look at some of the specific features of this table. First of all, in the header row, there is a filter drop down on each column. So if I only wanted to show items with a 10% discount, I can select the drop down, deselect everything, and just select 10%. So that can be a useful feature, although to be honest, when dealing with an order, the ability to apply a filter is perhaps not quite so impressive, but you'll see a situation where it is a little bit more impressive in just a moment. Now I mentioned just now the Table Tools Design tab. Let's click inside the table and look at some of the features on that tab. The table is automatically given a name and I can change that name. So I don't particularly like Table 1, so I'm going to change this to Order. Order Details Table and press Enter to confirm that. 
That's now the name of my table and if you look on the right hand end you'll see a table styles gallery and I'm going to look at styling tables in more detail in a later section but for the moment you can see that a style has been applied and it's the one highlighted, the third one along in blue. And of course this is a live preview so if you hover your mouse over any of the other styles you can see them applied in the worksheet below. To the left of the table styles, note the header row. If I want to turn the header row off, I can just by unchecking that box and that doesn't look particularly great, so let's turn that back on again. I also have banded rows that determines whether the style is banded rows or not and sometimes banded rows make it easier to read across a table. You can, if you want to, have banded columns as well, can get a little bit complicated if you turn those on also, so let's turn those off. You also have an option here to toggle off or on the filter button, and I'm going to turn that off because we don't really need it in this particular example. Now one thing that isn't switched on is the total row. Let's have a total row in this table. Now that doesn't mean that it includes the total row that we had before. In fact, I'm going to get rid of that total row in a moment. But in the total row now, note the word total in the leftmost cell. I can have a number of different types of total and some of the columns will have no total. For instance, there isn't too much point in totaling the unit price of the discount column. But if I did want the total price, I can click in the cell and you can see a little drop down to the right. And that gives me alternative totals that I can include in an item in the total row in a table. Now at the moment I have count selected, but I could also do a sum. And of course that gives me the same number that I had before, $199.59. And if I wanted the total number of items in the quantity column, I could do a sum there as well. Because of course it's a sum of the number of items and that gives me the 11 that I had before. So now I feel fairly confident that I can just get rid of the old totals row by just right clicking and selecting delete. Okay, I'd just like to change the table style a little bit because it's not really apparent to me just looking at that table that the totals row is part of the table. So let me click on the drop down in the table styles gallery and select one that includes a totals row. One other thing to point out here is you notice the column headers on the Excel sheet, so A, B, C, D, etc. And you notice the column headings in the table. If you have a very long table, what can happen is that the header can disappear and all you see is B, C, D, E, F. But actually that's not what happens at all and what actually happens is pretty clever. So let me scroll down here, watch carefully and you'll see that the B, C, D, E column headers have been replaced by the actual names of the columns within the table until of course I scroll back down again. So that's a pretty good feature as well. Now one of the things to point out about tables is that you generally use tables when each row represents a record of something, which in this case is a line item. So when we're dealing with tables, we're dealing with ranges where each row in the range is some sort of record. Apart from of course, potentially the top row, the header row, and the bottom row where we have the totals row. Now there is another candidate for a table in this workbook and that's the catalogue. So let's jump across to the catalogue sheet and I've selected a cell within the catalogue. I'm going to go up to insert and select table. Just make sure that the range selected by Excel is correct. So I can see here A1 to C85 which looks correct to me. Select my table has headers and then click on OK. So I'm just going to do the same thing and change the name on the design tab here. So instead of table two, we're going to have parts catalog. And press enter. 
With this table, of course, the filter is a lot more useful. So if I wanted to find out which items we sell that cost more than $20, I can click on the filter drop down, go to number filters, greater than, and I'm going to say $20 and click OK. And the filter tells me that we just have one item, combination padlocks. And another useful feature here is the remove duplicates, because if you have data in a table, then you can remove duplicate rows very easily. So you'll find remove duplicates on the data ribbon and remove duplicates in the data tools group. And you'll see it gives me a list of the three columns in the table, part number, description, and price. And it says to me, what do you consider to be a duplicate? Do all three of those have to be the same in order for it to be considered a duplicate? Well, I have a suspicion that I may have a part with a specific part number duplicated in this catalog, but I can't be certain that the price is the same or that the description is the same. So what I'm going to do is to say, just see if you've got a duplicate part number anywhere and click OK. And you can see that one duplicate value was found and removed. So somewhere in that table, I had the same part number twice. Click on OK and that duplicate has gone. And while we're looking at those tools there on the Table Design tab, note this one, Convert to Range. If you want to convert a table back to being a range again, you can use that option. So that's how you sort of delete a table or remove a table, and it won't remove the data. It just leaves the data there, but no longer in a table. So there we have some of the basics of working with tables. In the next section, we're going to look at changing the shape of a table and some other features related to working with tables. That's it for this section. I'll see you then. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now, to see the rest of the videos in this Advanced Excel 2019 playlist, click over there. Finally, if you're enjoying this training, please leave us a thumbs up and some comments. Now, let's continue with our Microsoft Excel training.